I am Joyce Davis, a Henrico County resident and a policy analyst with the City of Richmond. I'm here on behalf of Richmond City Council Member Chris Hilbert, Chair of the Education and Human Services Committee, and he could not be here today and I extend his apologies. I'm here today also to just talk about um, the effects of ASVA and what I learned today in preparing these comments. I learned so much about how asthma impacts so many in this country and in this region. The numbers were astounding of the impact on African American children alone. And as an African American woman without children, I didn't realize how many people were affected or how they are impacted by this illness. Certainly I have friends and relatives over the years that said I have asthma, but as I conducted the research, I looked at so many things and those environmental factors that have an impact on asthma. And the research shows how asthma attacks account for approximately 45% increase in pediatric emergency room visits over the past decade. And in Richmond, we certainly have the problem of a high number of individuals. The research also showed how in urban cities, African Americans, Latinos, and low-income families have higher hospitalization and death rates due to asthma. And so in preparing those comments for today, I looked at what can legislators and policy makers do in my role to take precautionary measures, to focus on funding programs that reduce environmental hazards, for clean air programs and for outdoor air pollution pests that are in neighborhoods that affect our population, particularly, as I said before, in inner cities and minority communities. We support policies that support a stable climate, healthier air, and to request policies that influence, I'm sorry, that resist policies that influence negative climate change. It is a goal to promote sustainable economic development that does not compromise environmental quality and public health and increases an excess, I'm sorry, and increases excess carbon emissions for a clean energy power plant. I thank you for this opportunity to share these comments today. I also apologize for missing some of the words I had about three pages that focused on something else, and I had to do a lot of scratch through so that I could cut it down to something. So that's why I'm um, looking at my handwriting. So thank you. But thank you for this opportunity to share these comments today and for the benefit of learning so much about these environmental factors and to support this very important issue, the EPA Power Plan. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ken Schrott. He had a question mark next to his name. Uh, I'll pass. Okay. Our next speaker is John Zengara. Zuckner. Sorry about that. It's quite all right. My name is John Zuckner. I live in the city of Richmond, and I'm an urban planner kind of a futurist too. I've always been interested in the way we were heading and what we were doing with technology and how that would impact um, humanity and our civilization and our communities and our quality of life. Um, I got out of graduate school back in the mid 80s and by the early 90s I was really alarmed with uh, the way it seemed that we were pumping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and uh, being really reckless with our toxic, uh, toxic waste. And so I got involved with the Sierra Club and I've been involved with them for 20 years uh, trying to uh, write letters and um, influence policymakers here in Virginia about trying to clean up uh, what is in a lot of respects one of the dirtiest states in the nation. We're sitting on mountains of coal so we feel like we've got an obligation to use it and um, we, we try to turn a blind eye, and when I say we, I'm talking about the policymakers and the legislators and the people who contribute the most to their um, elections, uh, lobbyists from Dominion Power and other energy concerns. Um, 
we feel like because it's cheap, we ought to go ahead and use it. And Virginia um, is a national embarrassment because of the way that we have, uh, you know, continued to condone the use of um, um, dirty coal and clean coal in our power plants. And uh, the day of um, coal ha has um, uh, finally reached an end. We've seen so much um, a change in our, our climate and our weather patterns. Uh, it, it is um, more affordable now to switch to renewables. And um, I think one of the easiest ways to um, change the system of using coals is to regulate point source discharges. And so trying to set a, uh, a new lower threshold of 30% for cleaner energy production in Virginia um, is by far the best way to go. And it really does the whole economy a favor by pushing us into these renewable resources and um, developing um, sustainable green jobs. Um, if, if you look, if you dare to look a little further into the future, um, you see that our children and our grandchildren are really in for a rough road. When you see places in Australia and um, uh, Tucson and the American Southwest where um, climate temperatures during the summer are reaching 120, 128, 131, that's going to force people to live underground and that doesn't um, address where they're going to get the energy to make it through the rest of, um, um, for those communities to survive. We're experiencing major water um, shortages. Um, we're um, just basically, um, you know, we have our, our pedal to the metal on an economy that's unsustainable. And to me, one of the easiest ways to start switching um, our whole approach to using energy and to making sure that our um, communities are um, healthy and viable and that we're protecting the, the health and welfare of individuals and neighborhoods and even entire states um, is for EPA to um, hold the line and enforce this 30% uh, reduction in the carbon emissions. I really appreciate having the opportunity to comment to DEQ and EPA on this. Uh, it is uh, the most critical issue of our time. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Mary Crutchfield. Hi, I'm Mary Crutchfield. I'm a volunteer for Sierra Club. I come to speak to you today as a concerned citizen and property owner in Richmond, Virginia. I have already seen some of the effects of climate change in my own small property. I have observed that we have had more intense storms with heavier rainfall and with more frequency in the past five years than in previous years. A few years ago when Hurricane Irene came through Richmond, I lost the entire fence along one side of my property. In another storm, my next door neighbor had a tree fall onto the front of the house, which damaged windows, a porch, and part of the roof. It was a traumatizing experience to go through these storms and to see the damage that they <coughs> caused. I don't want to see uh, more severe storms like this and more damage like this. I have read that having more severe storms is one of the effects of climate change. Scientists have established that carbon pollution is the main contributor to climate change. Coal-fired power plants produce 40% of the carbon pollution in our country. Therefore, it is important to set a standard for the coal and gas-fired plants in order to prevent more serious changes in our climate in the future. I'm also concerned about the effects of climate change on Virginia's coast. It's important to take measures that cut back on carbon pollution in order to prevent increased warming, sea level rise, and flooding of Virginia's coast. I've read that Virginia's coast is the second most vulnerable to flooding after the Gulf Coast. It would be devastating to the tourist business of Virginia Beach and to the naval base in Norfolk if we had major flooding there. 
Lastly, I'm concerned about health issues that are the consequence of carbon pollution in our environment. The state of Virginia has, as you've heard many times just today, the highest rates of cases of asthma in the country. Dennis Alexander, the director of the American Lung Association in Virginia, wrote in the Times-Dispatch just two days ago, August 5th, about the dangers of sea level rise and flooding on Virginia's health, on Virginians' health. Quote, he said, sea level rise is a major health threat. Floods are the second deadliest of all weather-related hazards in the U.S., according to the most recent National Climate Assessment. Many people don't realize that flooding can lead to lung problems. He goes on to explain that dampness, mold, and bacteria after flooding can often trigger more severe symptoms for people with allergies and asthma. My sister-in-law and her daughter both suffer from asthma and allergies, so I have seen how they have been affected. I think that if carbon pollution can be reduced by having limits on coal-fired plants, that this will lower the number of asthma cases in our state and in the country. I fully support the EPA's clean power plan. Thank you.